You did this with your mouth. Like, you talked yourself into this. It's very strange. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. But I mean, I know you've got, and you've got a, a zillion things that you do, but like, even in a world of like the MMA stuff, that's still your mouth. It's always your fucking mouth that is taking you from where you started till now. You walk into this building, it's not like he had a family fortune and this was willed to him. Your mouth put you in a building this nice painted the walls the color it is you walk in it's like a a museum it's like you see pieces of of him hence me all over the fucking place that's all out of your mouth if anybody's watching or listening at home teetering on the verge of like i wonder if i should do a podcast send them a snapshot of that fucking room where you can launch bow and arrows for 45 yards they'll start talking well if you're interesting at all you should do a podcast Fuck like yeah. it can be a it can be a way to make a living there's enough people like this, I'm not a one of those um, famine thinkers. I think the opposite. I, I'm like, you could do it. Anybody could do it. I'm never like, man, it might not be enough for everybody. I and agree. Never, yeah. I'm always the guy who encourages yeah. it to like, hey, try it. Because, oh yeah. my God, it's fucking fun for me. When I w jumped in, it was Leo Laporte doing mm -hmm. This Week in Tech. And I think he still does that. And the Happy Tree Friends. And that was like the Apple podcast top five. And then... Me and Scott started with Smodcast, and then later on we added a bunch of stuff. But getting in within the first two years, we happened, and then right on the heels of us, Adam was on the radio, and then the radio job went away. And what, Adam, what year was that where Adam went to podcasting? I got to be two thousand. If we started Smodcast two thousand seven, I got it's either in. We start February two thousand seven. Either he loses the radio gig in two thousand seven and moves to podcast, or it happens in two thousand eight. Mm. But it was. Is in that neighborhood. Yes, and he's he was the uh, the the model for a lot of folks now, like Ralph Garman, the guy that I do Hollywood Babble. On I love with. Ralph. Ralph's amazing. He was let go by K Rock earlier this year or later. Yeah, like at the end of last year, right before Christmas, and so he too moved into a kind of online world. Um, it, it it can sustain a motherfucker. I mean, I was doing the radio show for years before I podcasted it. And yeah. that just was a question of making an RSS feed for us. So you made a podcast. When you started doing that, how long was it before you got together with some of the folks and started uh, the first quit? I remember listening to that first episode, but how long ago? Yeah, we called it the Revenge of the Screensavers for the first three episodes on the G4 complaint. So that was a few months later. It was at Macworld in January 2005. Because I was radio guy, I had my microphone and recorder. I had been going around Macworld recording stuff. 2004 Macworld, what were we talking about then? I don't know. I should... Uh, 2005 Macworld. I should go back and look. Uh, it was pre-iPhone. It was probably an iPod uh, announcement that day. But uh, we were talking, uh, and I thought, well, I should start my uh, recorder because these kinds of conversations are um, are my bread and butter. It's every tech journalist does this, where you get together with other journalists. You say, what's new? What's happening? Especially at conferences. What did you see? What? So I thought, well, it might be kind of fun for people. I'll record this, and they could hear it. Uh, I did. It was only 20 minutes long. It was pretty silly. Podcasting is a relatively new medium that has its roots in the early 2000s. Thanks to pioneers such as Leo Laporte, Adam Carolla, Kevin Smith and Joe Rogan, the medium has seen incredible growth in recent years with thousands of podcasts worldwide covering every conceivable subject matter in many different languages. The term podcasting is believed to have been coined in 2004 by Ben Hammersley of The Guardian. In 2013, Apple reported over 1 billion podcast subscriptions on its iTunes store. They claimed that those billion subscriptions were spread across 250,000 unique podcasts in more than 100 languages, and that more than 8 million episodes had been published in the iTunes store to date. It's a funny thing, like when you go into the world of podcasting, it's not only amazing how many podcasts there are out there, but how many podcasts there are per subject. So I knew, I already before I even thought about doing this podcast, I knew of quite a few Doctor Who podcasts. There's uh, 42 to Doomsday, there is uh, Toby Haydock's Who's Round, uh, the Hanbro podcast, there's uh, just the Doctor Who fan podcast. There are just so many on this one subject. 
And it's such a community, I think. Like, you know, even if just walking into to any genre of podcasting, you're walking into community. I typed in, I saw the search bar, and I was like, oh, let me just type in things that interest me. I was like, wrestling. OSW Review, old school wrestling podcast. I was like, three random Irish guys talking about wrestling, old pod, old wrestling events from when I was a kid. That sounds like my jam. Download. And then is recommended as you liked this one. Attitude Era podcast, etc, etc. Download. Next thing you know, I'm downloading podcasts like crazy. I've got no room left on my phone. And now at this point in time, I've just checked before I started filming, I'm subscribed to 33 podcasts. Podcasting has seen slower growth in the UK when compared to the US, but is still growing in popularity, with several podcasting festivals taking place and regular live podcasts at the annual Edinburgh Fringe Festival. The, 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 the performance that we're talking about, the type of work that you're doing, your live shows, which you've yeah. done for 20 years at the Fringe and longer, not at the Fringe, I'm sure. Mm. Um, are you able to translate that kind of success, or that kind of feeling, into other creative outlets as successfully or is this like this is this is your superpower oh yeah no the the lie i mean if i did like for tv if they just stuck a camera on me with a room full of people that's the best way to do that for me yeah but they're obsessed with formats and yeah. prizes and uh, is there a car or a holiday at the end of that yeah and what well, is that <laughs> and is that frustrating for you given that yeah you're like, well why don't you just come and watch one time and see yeah. something incredible happen but i mean we don't i mean look i what i need i mean what we all need to look at now is just making our own tv shows do you yeah. know what i mean because everybody's on the telly now in 2019 a group of prominent uk podcasters got together to create pop bible magazine an initiative designed to help promote and create awareness of podcasting as a medium in the uk so pod bible is obviously pip and co's uh, creation which is the uk's first ever podcast magazine and we are the home of the best podcast in the world so we have um teamed up with uh pod bible guys to um support them sponsor them um give some of our tips and advice in the mag as well so today is the first day of its launch and we have pip here handing them out podcast it was great to get people coming out specifically because they'd heard about it online again it's something that me Stu and adam have been are working on for a few months now with no idea if anyone cares. So then we did a post saying where we'll be and what time. And we had tons of people. So it was amazing to meet people and interact in that way and make it clear that this isn't about my podcast. It's about my love of podcasts and Stu's love of podcasts and Adam's love of podcasts. So yeah, it's great fun. Podcasting can be a hobby or a business. So how do podcasters really make money? Are you able to tell us about how much revenue you're generating here at Twit these days? Yeah, well... Um, 2005, zero. Yep. <laughs> Actually, I know, you know what? We always made money on Twitter because I think even in 2005, um, I told people, well, we'd like to keep doing this, but there are costs. If you'd like to donate, please do. And even then, I think people were already, uh, initially, we uh, we've still do this, by the way. We say $2 a month is a suggested amount. It's always free. You don't have to, but if you'd like to, it would help us out. And we were making eight or $9,000 a month all, from the beginning of doing that. And that was more than enough to cover my time, uh, the costs of it. So we, we, I shouldn't say we were zero in, in year one. In year one, we probably made you know gross revenues of probably sixty or seventy thousand dollars in year one. Um, I said at the time, I, I'm not going to sell ads. I don't like the idea of doing ads. I would rather just have it be listener supported. But what we learned pretty quickly is that only one or two percent of the people who listen ever donate. Most people don't. People are used to free media, advertising supported media. So I kind of gave in. We did start making money. I think by 2007, I think we made 300, we grossed 300,000 in advertising in, in that year. Uh, 2008, it was about 600,000 in advertising. 2009, it was about 1.2 million. It doubled each year. At the moment, podcasting for us isn't a business and it's not designed to be. It's, it's just something that we both thought would be fun and it has been. And, um, I'm a bit of a planner, a bit of a researcher, so when we started and when I was looking into how to start a podcast and hosting and all that kind of stuff, uh, I did also look into monetization, and obviously I knew about Patreon and things like that from, from other podcasts that I, that I listened to, and so we had a Patreon page right from the very beginning, which I know some people don't do. Um, we didn't kind of push it, we, didn't, we talked about it a little bit at the end of the episodes, and we put out extended edits and started doing kind of bonus stuff for the patrons and gradually over the months the, the patrons grew. Um, we don't have a lot 
we have just kind of got into the uh, double figures, but um, it's really nice that people are interested enough uh, and enjoyed enough to to put a bit of money behind supporting the show, which is great. Um, it's not going to change our lives uh, or let us give up our day jobs, but it's it's enough to cover you know hosting costs and and things like that, which is really lovely. So uh, if the show grows, if the audience grows, then we will. Uh, hopefully maybe take on some sponsors in the future but it's not something that we're kind of we're trying to turn into a big business what do i understand about podcasting as a business and how to make money off it it's an easy answer nothing i i don't make money off the podcasts i do it doesn't run as a business um i'd love it to but i generally have no clue how to go about that um, i podcast because i enjoy it I podcast because it gets me into places that I would like to get into, uh, be it press access for San Diego Comic-Con, which I've had. It gets me the ability to sit down with filmmakers who I'm huge fans of. But it would be nice if I could make a little bit of money and pay some bills with it and put the money back into equipment to be a better podcaster. Um, it's also launched me into being a filmmaker. So, you know, running something as a business or being paid doesn't always mean dollars, pounds, euros. It can be payment in another way. All podcasts start with one voice and one mic. But where do they lead? And what does the current and the future state of podcasting as a medium look like? I think the reason podcasts connect so much is it feels more personal. Radio is just on and everyone's listening at the same time. As stupid as that sounds, a podcast, you're the only one listening in that moment. It feels so personal and intimate rather than feeling like it's just on TV and everyone's tuned in at the same time. I think that gives you that feeling that the podcasters are talking to you and you're sat there with them here in this, this moment. I don't think people realize just how liberating and freeing and inspiring podcasting can be you know the current state of podcasting is it's on the up as far as i'm concerned because like i said there's 637,000 podcasts out there but if you were to turn around to average joe blogs in the road and go hey what's a podcast if i go oh we'll probably go that thing on the internet i i, I don't know I'm like, mm. Don't, not everyone knows what it is. But it's getting there. It's getting there. I went to see Halloween, the new Halloween movie. And they're like, we're looking for Michael Myers to talk about on our podcast. I was like, fuck yes. A Hollywood movie is mentioning podcasting. I know Kevin Smith put podcasting in his movies. But to see it in Halloween, a blockbuster movie, it was amazing. It made me so proud as a podcaster. And that sounds really daft. But it made me proud. When Mark Maron interviewed Barack Obama on a podcast the former president of the united states was on a podcast and now mark maron's going to be on the simpsons podcasting with crusty the clown and big bang theories had podcasting in part of it so it is on the up the you know the, the attention to the medium is on the up and it's really good and it's for someone that's been there since near the start when people go what are you listening to and then a podcast and they go what the fuck is a podcast to now it being on mainstream TV and movies, it's amazing. I, I absolutely love it. It's an art form that is so, so wonderful because anyone can do it. Like I'm talking about these Hollywood blockbuster movies and we're talking about TV. Not everyone can do that. They can try. They can put their pictures out there. They can, you know, you can train to become an actor and all this sort of stuff. And you can, you can work your way up and up and up and up and then you can get there one day. But a podcast, you literally plug in, record, send it to iTunes, boom, congratulations, you're a podcaster. So what advice would you give to someone that's considering starting their own podcast? Well, not to get Shia LaBeouf on it, but it would be just do it. Like, you know, I already, I wish I could show people the mixer I used in my first podcast. If I can do it, anybody can do it. If you are out there and you think, I want to do a podcast, I mean, phones these days have podcast recorders. You can literally make a podcast with your phone. My only advice would be do it, stick to your guns, and just be true to yourself. I say jump in head first, 
you know, have fun with it. Don't let anybody discourage you. You can do whatever you want. And it, you, there's so many topics out there. Whatever you want to do, it's the wonderful thing about podcasting. There's got to be about 632 billion podcasts out there in the minute, all about different things. Like, there's so many. The Star Wars podcast, Doctor Who podcasts, Kiss podcasts, wrestling podcasts, How to Wipe Your Ass podcasts. There's everything. Everything you could enjoy in life, there's probably a podcast about it to listen to and create your own because you never know, you might have that niche audience that don't. Make sure that you pick a topic that you're really interested in um, and not kind of go for something that you think people want to hear, but something that you're interested in and that you would like to listen to because um, otherwise it's a, it's a lot more work than people think and you'll get bored and you'll stop if it's not something that you're really interested in. So, so pick something you're passionate about and you can talk for hours and hours about. Uh, would I give advice to someone starting a podcast? I would. No, I would say do, do it. it. It's great because you get your ideas out there. You know, do you see that? Your ideas come out there. There's no one telling no one's you telling not, not to do, to do it. Yeah. yeah, there's no one telling you what to do. You, don't you, have to, to, you tell me what to do. Well, don't I have to. Well, go out there, do it. You don't need anything big, elaborate, and and expensive to record on. Just, just. Uh, you just need a microphone and a computer and an internet connection and the willingness sometimes to make an ass out of yourself and ask a question which isn't good or stumble on the mic and go uh, 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 and you'll do that probably for your first so many episodes but then when you get there it will be your show.